All right, let's talk about sports for a minute. Anybody catch the Broncos game yesterday? They uh, didn't have any quarterbacks, which I'm not sure if you're huge football fans or not, but that's a pretty important position. All the quarterbacks had to be quarantined because of COVID exposure. So a wide receiver on the practice squad had to fill in and it didn't go well. Now on Saturday, a college team had to do something similar, but it worked out a lot better for them. All the Vanderbilt kickers, had to go into quarantine. So the goalie for the women's soccer team stepped in. Sarah Fuller made history as the first woman to play in one of the Power Five conferences. I just love that moment where she, I, I wish I was there when she got the call, they handed her the helmet, they were like, get in there. I, I love it, I just love this story. But we have to remember that she's not the first woman to play in a college football game. That actually happened right here in Oregon in 1997. So let's take a look back in the KGW vault. Liz Heaston will line up at the 10 yard line. The nation is watching and listening. The soccer player from Willamette University in Salem, Oregon. She's ready. She's been practicing all week. The snap is low. Joey sets it down. It's up. The flag's fly. It's good, but there's a flag on the field. I think you're going to get offside the left field, so that baby's going to count. No pressure. How <laughs> about the pressure of that kick? That's Liz Heaston from Willamette. She became the first woman to play and score in a college football game. She got called up because other kickers were injured. And like they said, the nation was watching this. You see, she ended up on the Today Show with Katie Couric. In fact, I don't even remember kicking the ball. I remember the snap and the hold and when it went through the uprights, but I don't remember in between. You ever tried to kick a field goal? Next time you're out by a football field, try. It's like not easy. So Heaston, uh, who also played soccer for Willamette, ended up playing in two football games for the Bearcats. Joe Ranieri talked to her today about that historic moment 23 years ago. What was that like? What was your kind of your emotions going through? Well, I mean, you didn't have a lot. Of, I didn't have a lot of time to think about it, fortunately. I mean, it, and, we, you know, I had worked you know, being a collegiate athlete, you work the mental side of things on, you know, on a regular basis. And so just working that mental side of things to get you prepared to be able to do that. Um, and I, li I mean, literally, I went from, a, I finished a soccer game, I played that game, got in the van, changed clothes in the van, went out onto the field, and it was the second quarter. And I kicked in the second quarter. I mean, literally, like, I mean, it was that fast. And so, I mean, I mean, just like any other athletic thing that happens quickly, I mean, you get the adrenaline rush, you've got, you know, all the things, but I had a great team. I had great support. I mean, that's the thing when you, when you look back on it. I mean, I had a great coach. I had great coaching staff. I had great team members on both sides. So, I mean, I think we stand on the shoulders of giants. Truly, there are women much bigger than us who have done much bigger things um, before us. Um, had t did Title IX not exist, that would not have ever happened. She's also a great athlete. I think that 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 played a role. But so cool speaking to her today. That was great to hear from her. Lamet, uh, you know, she started kind of a trend. They recently had a couple of other female kickers: Kaylin Steerton in 2017 and Kyla Gordon in 2019.